assembling us here this morning, Lord, where we can come to cast all our cares upon you because we know that you truly do care for us. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love towards your people, Lord. Father, we are desperate to feast on the bread of thy presence and quench our thirst with the wine of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God. I pray, Lord, for all the people who are hurting over the airways, Lord. I pray that you would bless them this morning physically, mentally, financially, emotionally, but most of all spiritually. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to the Lighthouse Church of All Nations. We are so happy to have you from wherever you're watching all over the world. We love you and there is still nothing you can do about it. Thank you. Our church has truly left the building, but you are with us. We are with you and we are going to get our praise on today. Amen. Amen. Even though we are spread out, Pastor Sherlyn and Pastor Sean are still your cyber pastors. And today we also have a streaming team here. So let us know where you're watching from. Check in. Let us know where you're watching. Say hey to the streaming team that are prepared to just greet you today and just welcome you. Also, you can see us, but we want to see you. So right now, our Lighthouse Church um, tags for Instagram, for Facebook are showing up on your screen. Take a picture of you and your family worshiping this morning. Post it to Facebook. Post it to Instagram. Make sure you tag Lighthouse Church so we can see you. Also, I want to remind you that our 24-hour giving is open. If you want to give via text, if you want to give online, you can do that at any time today, any time during this service. But we also want to take a moment just to thank all of those who have given, who have given online, who have given via text. We praise God that our giving has not gone down. We are still being able to sustain ministry here. We're still being able to sustain giving to seniors. We're blessing small businesses. So many small businesses we bless this week because of your faithful giving. We appreciate you for giving online, for even dropping off your tithes for those who have done that um, and sending it via mail. So again, we appreciate you, we love you, and we thank you for your committed giving to this house. Also, we want you to share this service right now with all your friends. Text them, share it via Facebook, share it via Instagram so they don't miss out. This is truly the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing today, amen. So if you were with us on Wednesday, Pastor Dan announced something spectacular, which I'm sure a lot of you are here for. Um, if you didn't know, Pastor Dan has, again, because of your faithful giving, we are able to bless others. Pastor Dan has <laughs> agreed to allow five people to win $1,000 today. If you have not already participated in this, unfortunately the giving is closed. It closed at 8 a.m. Central Time. Not but the giving, those, not the giving, the registration. The registration. <laughs> Thank you. Has, was closed, but all those names, thousands of names of you all pouring into our Facebook page have been added to this drum. So again, unfortunately, if you didn't already make that cutoff, it is too late, but we appreciate all those who are streaming live, hoping that their name is called today, amen. And I hope it is too, Elder Sam. Good morning, everybody. You said it right. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, my goodness. And the only thing I wish, I wish so bad I could put my arms around every one of you. This, I think that's the hardest part for me is not being able to hug everybody. And we're doing social distancing even here for those that are helping me with live stream. But we love you so much. We just want you to know we love you. We love you so much. And I'm telling you what, I, I got the senior assistant pastors here with me today. Pastor Bastrill down there, Pastor Fransik, Pastor Frank. I got the senior assistant pastors. Pastor Garland is up here with me today, Mother Willis and Linda. And I'm gonna just serve all of you notice, Shaimika. I'm gonna serve everybody notice. The first service back, we're just gonna plan a whole one hour shouting service. That's all we're gonna do. We're just gonna shout. That's it, one hour. We're gonna shout when you come back. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, that's and I wanna make sure that if you registered this week, you, you know, we're giving these away, and I'm not going to tell you when. It's going to just be any time during this broadcast, and this is a highlight to me. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you when. Let's do one right now. You want to do one right Let's now? Let's do one right now. How do I? All right, so. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Uh, did you clarify? Once I call their name, they have two minutes to call. Now, listen. There's going to be a special number. I need, Renee, somebody should be helping me here to give me a thumbs up that the number is on the screen already. I don't want to draw a name until... I know the number is up on the screen, so I'm gonna just let her spin it. I got enough staff here. Somebody should be running to give me a thumbs up. Please move quickly, Pete. Somebody, it's on the screen. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Only the person that we call. Only call the that person that number. we call. And you can't call for them. Correct. It has to be that person. 
Somebody's about to win the first $1,000. You know, let me just tell you why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because Pastor Adam has had over 50 calls this week and requests from people for money. We've had over 18 churches call us for money. Lighthouse, everybody knows Lighthouse is a blessed house. And so because of that, the Holy Ghost led me. We've been partnering with a Country House Restaurant. We've given them a lot of money this week. We're blessing small businesses. And God has blessed us because you tithe and you give. Call right now unless... Now, don't call the extra number that's on the screen. These are Facebook names only that registered since last week. Here's the first one. If you are Dr. Kendria Atkins, you're the first $1,000 winner. Dr. Kendria Atkins, call us. You have two minutes. Time for the All decision. right, that's all. So let's, right now, we are going to worship the Lord. So again, when you're in your home, stand to your feet right now. Lift your amen. hands. We're going to turn it over to the praise team for some worship today. Amen, amen, amen. Call, you got two minutes, Dr. Kendria Atkins. Bless your name, God.
again, if you missed our first drawing, Dr. Kendra Atkinson, please call in. You just have one more minute. If not, we're going to pick somebody else. So right now, if you're at home, bring your children around the screen. Wherever you are, Pastor Rachel, um, Brother Maurice are here with some children's ministry impartation. Wait a minute, Elder right Sam. I thought I dotted my I's and crossed my T's with Renee and everybody. Her two minutes is up. She didn't call? No. Oh, sorry. No, we're not waiting. We're not waiting. That means we... The, Let's the pick another deal one. is if they don't call in two minutes... Can anybody please tell Renee that I need to see that signal? I hate to do this while we're on live television, but I'm going to do it. Come on, Pastor Adam. We're drawing somebody else. Okay, so they didn't call in two... Doc... Oh, she, you know how upset she's going to be. She's going to be so upset. But somebody else, here goes somebody else's favor. Is that L-Y? L-Y Green. You have two minutes to call. Two minutes. L-Y Green. All right. Time it. Don't let it go past two minutes, Pastor Adam. Pastor Rachel. Hello, my Lighthouse Larrys. I think I have a friend here somewhere. A friend's coming to see me. No, I, get, I hope. Get, get, get me, get, get me that ball back. What? Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Are, are you okay, CJ? I cannot stand little brothers. Uh-oh. What happened? He took my ball. He took your ball? Yes. It's and not so his. And so what'd you do? I took it back. Oh, it's no. It's mine. You guys are fighting? Yes, I can't stand him. Oh, my goodness. CJ, listen, listen. We're all stuck at home right now. Everybody has got to calm no, no, down. No, 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 no. You don't understand. No, 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 no. I you had a little no, brother. No, 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 I do no, understand. No. Brothers that are puppets are way more annoying. Okay, CJ, do me a favor. Uh -huh. Ready? Yep. We're going to breathe through our nose. You ready? Breathe okay. in. And out. <sighs> do it again. And out. <sighs> okay, are you feeling a little calmer? Yes, a little bit. Just a little bit, though. Just oh, a just, little bit. Okay, let's do it one more time. You guys at home, too. If you're maybe having a stressful time right now, let's all, everybody, just breathe through our nose. Here we go. And out. <sighs> one more time. Okay, now I feel ben? a lot better. Okay, good. Okay. So when you're calmer, usually that means you can hear a word from the Lord, okay? Can, can I tell you a little something? Okay. Okay. Listen up. Ephesians 4 and 32 tells us to be kind to one another. And this oh. world needs a lot more kindness. Okay? Yeah, that's true. Can you agree at home with me? Do you need more kindness maybe at your house? Yeah, we all need more kindness. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a quick way to help you to remember to be kind. So everybody okay. stand up with me real quick. Okay. All right. You're going to need both your hands. You got your hands? I only got one hand. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> close enough, CJ. Do the best you can. All right. You ready? Okay. All right. Follow Miss Rachel. Say it back to me. I'll say it first, then you say it. Be kind. Be kind. And compassionate. And compassionate. To one another. To one another. Forgiving each other. Forgiving each other. Just as Christ. Just as Christ. God. God. Forgave you. Forgave you. That's Ephesians 4. And Ephesians 4. And 32. And 32. Let's do it one more time because sometimes an extra reminder to be kind is important. Okay? One more time. Here we go. Be kind, be kind and compassionate and compassionate to one another to one another forgiving each other forgiving each other just as Christ just as Christ God God forgave, forgave you forgave you Ephesians Ephesians 4 4 and 32 and 32 Okay CJ do you think you could go home and be kinder to your brother maybe Hmm yeah, I think I can. Oh, thank goodness. And you at home, can you be kind, practice kindness at your home, at the store, at the gas station, wherever you might hopefully not need to go. But, you know, just practice kindness. Our world needs more kind people. And you know what would be really kind right now, CJ? What? If we gave away some more money. 
Can we, yeah. Pastor, please? Yeah, please, we can should. I, can Let's I, please, please, do please? it. I'm telling you what. And guess what? L.Y. Green was not on this morning. Oh, what? No. What God had. So we're going to, we're going to. Wait, wait, we got to say bye, CJ. Bye, CJ. Bye, okay, CJ. We'll see you later, CJ. I'm going to go pull money. Okay. <laughs> Pastor, you, I you hope want... it's somebody in here. Matter of fact, Lord, let it be somebody in case. Okay, twirl it. We got to go. Oh, we got to okay, go. Sorry, sorry. I so actually, more. actually, I'm going to pull two right now. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Because see, the... folks should have been up. L.Y. Oh, Green and Dr. Up? Kendra. Oh, my I'm goodness. So excited. I'm so excited. All right. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm going to so pull excited. two. And you, okay. have, you both have two minutes. They both have two minutes now. Okay, here we go. Lizbeth Martinez Bocamp. That sounds right. Lizbeth Martinez Bocamp. You have two minutes to call two the minutes. number on your screen. Oh, Pastor, I'm so excited. My heart is beating fast. I know. Fast. Here goes one more. Here goes one more. Here goes one more. We're just blessing people. If you just tuned in, Lighthouse Church is blessed to be a blessing. Elizabeth Protich. Elizabeth P -R -O -T -I -C -H. Protich. You have two minutes. P R O T I C H. All right, Elder okay. Sam. Thank you. Let's give Pastor Rachel a big round of applause. Again, if you're in the chat, show some love to Rachel right now. Let her know how much you and your kids enjoy that ministry. Right now, I'm going to ask Pastor Garland to come up. You know, each week he leads us in giving. He imparts so many uh, pieces of wisdom to us. Um, and if you all weren't here on Wednesday, Pastor Dan asked for 10 people to sow a $77 seat. Let me tell you, these are all the names. Over 61 people sowed that seat. So again, we thank you for your giving. We know that we are a blessed house. And as Pastor said, we are blessed to be a blessing to others. So Pastor Garland, I'm going to give you this mic. I know you have an impartation for us today. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It is time for the ministry of giving. Amen. As you can see here, we get excited at this time. So we want to encourage you. You can give online if you're watching. Uh, you also have the option to mail it in the mail or you can drop it off at the church. Whatever way you give, the most important thing is that you do give. So while I'm up here, I just want to share this quick story. You know, God talks to me through like analogies and things like that. So I uh, remember it was not too long ago, I was outside uh, shooting hoops with my, uh, my youngest son. And uh, for those of you who don't know, that means basketball, amen. So we were outside playing basketball and I was having a good day. You know, I was out there, I was making just about every shot, Maurice, you'd have been proud of me. And uh, I would, the handles, everything was falling in place. And he asked me this question, he said, Dad, how come you're not in the NBA? I said, oh, okay. Well, I, I, I said, well, this is my way out. I said, well, right now, you know, most players, they retire when they're my age, right? He was like, well, didn't you used to be better when you were younger than you are now? Because now you're good enough. And I said, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you how I got out of that, but this is the revelation I got. When it comes to the game of basketball, at that time, there was no difference between me and an NBA player, except for one thing. They could do it with opposition. See, when nobody's in front of me, I can dribble the ball any way I want to. I can get to the basket. I can lay it in with the left hand, make it look real pretty. But if you put somebody in front of me, it makes it a little bit more difficult. And one of the rules in basketball is very simple. When you begin to dribble the ball and you run into opposition, you have to pick the ball up and you cannot move anymore. But there's a way out of this situation, and it's called pivoting. See, when you are in a game of basketball, you can't leave where you are, but you can pivot. Pivot means that I have one foot planted, but I can shift on the other foot and change my perspective. And what I felt like God was telling me at this time that we are living in right now, he is calling the church to a pivot. It's a pivot because we have run into some opposition. And we have got put in a situation where things are uncomfortable. We may not be able to see clearly. But God said it's not the time for you to get up and move to another place. you got to keep one foot planted. And when you keep one foot planted, you can turn and you can change your perspective. God is looking for people, especially when it comes to giving. Because I heard a preacher say this, that when it comes to, to stressful times and we get into to situations where things are not the way that they should be, the first thing people do is that they give up their generosity. And the second thing that they do is that they compromise their morals. Us, as Christians, we're not called to do that. We're called to pivot. That means that even though I can't be in the sanctuary physically, I'm still going to be able to sow my seed from wherever I am. 
So that's the word that God gave me for you today. If you're sitting at home, we are in a pivotal situation right now. God is calling the church not to give up, not to move, but stay planted. We got one foot in the church spiritually, but we are still here to support the ministry that God can do what he wants to do. Amen. So everybody, everybody in here, let's just stretch our hands to everyone at home, and we just want to say a quick prayer. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you that you're going to get the glory out of this situation. God, you said it in your word that you will not leave us nor forsake us. So as we trust in you, God, believing that you will do everything that you said that you would do, we keep our foot planted. We stand anchored in the things of God. Let everyone that sows a seed, God, let them be blessed beyond measure, God, that they would know that they are following your will and your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Garland. And I believe that prayer motivated Sister Elizabeth to call to claim her $1,000 prize. We thank God for you. However, we're still two um, people that did not call. So we have to pick two more people, Pastor Garland. Let's spin this around. And can you do the honors, please? Jay Bay, Jalen Ramsey. All right, Miss Jalen, you have two minutes to call that number right now on the screen so you can claim your $1,000 prize. Let's do one more, Pastor Garland. Malaysia McAfee. All right, right now you have two minutes to call. That number is showing up right on your screen. Again, we have a couple more to give out today. So again, we thank you for staying with us. But right now we have some more worship music by our very own Pastor Dan. Let's join him now as he sings in the midst of it all. Praise God. You better pick up that phone and call really quickly. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Yes, I'm waiting, son. Mm. Come on, everybody, just stand where you are. I've come through. Many hard trials Through temptations on every hand Though Satan's tried to stop me And to place my feet on sinking sand <laughs> Through the pain and all of my sorrows my tears every one of my fears this is the part the Lord was there to keep me oh, and he kept me in the midst of it all come on sing with me singers not because I have always been so faithful not even because I've always obeyed. No. It's not because I always trusted him to be with me every step of the way. But it's because Jesus loves me so dearly. Oh. He was there to answer my call. Me. Oh, he kept me in the midst of it all. Come on, singers. Listen, the Lord is going to bring us all through this. And I've been singing this all week long. Temptations on every hand. Though Satan. And to place my feet on sinking sand. That's what the devil wants to you, you to do right now. But throw your shoulders back. Oh. Jesus loves me dearly. He was there to answer my calls. He was always there to protect me. Oh. He kept me in the midst of it. Jesus will always, he'll always pray. 
protect you. He keeps you in the midst of it all. I'm telling you this morning, raise your hand where you are thinking that he's never left you. He's never left Shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Because the Lord has given his angels charge over thee. Ah, the Lord has got his angels over you. The Lord has got his angels over you. My God, I feel something right here. Ah, I wish 20 people, 20 people, 20 people would grab your phone and just pick it up and dial the number on your screen. And I want you just to holler, he kept me, he kept me, and just throw the phone back down. Just holler, he kept me, and throw the phone down in the midst of it all. My God, today, the Lord has kept me. 20 people, pick up your phone. Holler in your phone. He kept me. He kept me. And just slam the phone back down. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Dan. Hallelujah. I just want to thank Sister Jalen and Sister Malaysia for calling in. You have $1,000 that we hope truly blesses you and your family this week. I also want to draw attention to our streaming team. Again, if you are online, interact with them. They are ready to greet you. They're ready to pray for you. If you have any, um, need any help giving online or giving via text, again, call our team. We are here to support you. Amen. Amen. Well, we have two more $1,000 giveaways, so stay tuned. We are not done yet. And right after this, Pastor Dan is coming with an amazing word from the Lord. But right now, I want to ask Pastor Frank to come up. For those of you who attend the 11 o'clock service, Pastor Frank is your encourager. He's your supporter. He is your cheerleader. So he's going to have a little impartation uh, to you right now. And after that, there might be another drawing. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, Lighthouse Church family and all who are viewing our live stream. We welcome you. We thank you for partnering with us. And I know you're at home and you want to be here, but we're just trying to get it out to you so you can be able to share with us this beautiful, glorious day that we're having in the Lord. And I know you're at home, you're sitting at home, and you got a lot of questions. What's going on? What is, the, what is God saying? What is God doing? Why is this happening? you got a lot of questions, and we just want to let you know to trust in the Lord. Psalms 31 says this. It says to be of good courage, and God will strengthen your heart, all of you who trust in the Lord. So I want to say thank you so much for being part of God's family. I want to say thank you so much for all the essential, all of you people who are important out there in the front lines, all the doctors and nurses, all the truck drivers that are carrying out, all the ministries out there that are streaming live, everybody that's essential workers out there, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for just doing what you do best. You're standing up and you're shining. So I just want to say one thing. There was a time in Jeremiah chapter 8 where the Lord was saying this to the people. He says, is there a bomb in Gilead? Is there a bomb in Gilead? He's saying, is there a doctor? Is there a physician? Is there a cure going on in Gilead? And they said, no, there's no bomb in Gilead. There's no doctor here. Well, I just want to serve you notice today that if you know that Jesus Christ is the bomb of Gilead, he's the one that's going to heal you. He's the one that's going to restore back everything. You're going to be back at work. You're going to be back at church. Just trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding because the blood of Jesus is still powerful. It's still doing the work. It's still going to do the cure. Just trust in that blood. There's power in the blood of Jesus. He is the bomb in Gilead. Come on and clap it up right where you're at in your own home and give them a shout of praise. You got to be encouraged today. This is where your faith comes to be alive. You got to feed your faith so much that you got to, you got to starve your fears. Hallelujah. We love you all. Be encouraged in the Lord, all of you who are at home with your families. Glory be to Jesus. God, you just got to take this time out and set your house in order. Yes. This time out for everyone that's staying at home, set your house in order. Increase that faith. 
starve those fears don't let fear get a grip of you don't worry about your money don't worry about your job right now worry about yourself and your family who's circling around you worry about those people right now everything else is in God's hands God's got control over everything just trust him with all your heart in Jesus name and it will be so hallelujah we thank you pastor Frank before you leave I think it's time to pick another name let's see all right pastor Frank can you do the honors for us Okay, here we go. <laughs> Honorable Adkip D. Victoria Oromi. Again, please forgive us for the name, but again. No, Honorable Pastor Adam knows him. He's supposed oh. to be up there with you. This is your all fault for having funny Facebook names, but it's okay. Honorable <laughs> Honorable Akindipi Victoria Oromi. This sound, sound good? Okay. There you go. Perfect. Well, you, you have two minutes to call. Two minutes to call. And that sounds like one of our cyber church family. It does. Elder Samantha. And whatever country you're watching us from today, no matter what, we'll get it to you some way. It'll be 1,000 U.S. dollars. Okay? So I just want to, I, I, I'm, thank you, Pastor Frank. So Elder Samantha, how many have we given? We've given three. We've given three. And That's now we're waiting four. for Honorable to call. Okay? Honorable. Now, I want to tell you something. I, I want all the kids to get ready in your house, but I want, to, I want to tell you something. Just a moment ago, just a moment ago, when they were drawing a couple of names, now, young Pastor Adam, uh, he's, he's learning the ropes here this morning. Um, he's been for, for days putting those names in there, thousands of, of people that went online and put their name. And the first, was it the first two that we drew that they didn't call within that two minutes, which means they weren't watching. Thousands of people are on all of our platforms right now, but those two did not watch. This is not what I'm going to preach on, but catch this sermon right here. God is trying to tell you something right here. There's a scripture in the Bible where the Lord had prepared a table. He had prepared a banquet, Elder Marlene. He had prepared, the table was spread. That's why you ever hear some old folks used to say, the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. It comes from this parable. The table of the Lord was spread and the feast was called, but they didn't show up to the feast. And so the Lord said, the Lord said to them, go out into the highways and to the byways and compel the lost to come. Compel the lost to come that my house may be filled. And I thought about that just now and I thought, okay, if, those, if, if they went to the trouble of putting their name in, first of all, they're going to be so upset when they find out in the replay that, that they, their name, they could have been blessed with a $1,000. I wonder this morning how many people the Lord is trying to bless and he's trying to tell us something. Because be very clear, this did not take God by surprise. God did not just wake up and go, my goodness, what's happening? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This earth belongs to God. The fullness of all of it, it all belongs to God. And God was not taken by surprise. He's in charge and he's in control. And God has got multiple blessings. God, I feel the Holy Ghost here. I, I don't want to lose this this morning. I, I, I want to just uh, put the pedal down before I minister to you for about 10 minutes here this morning. Because you know, preaching on live stream is different than, uh, preaching on uh, live stream here is different than when you're in the sanctuary. And I don't want you to miss this right here. God has prepared blessings for you in this season of famine. Always in the Bible, always in the Bible, when there was a famine in the land, God set it up. Well, let's just go here. Egypt, the plagues came over Egypt. The Egyptians wound up losing it all. But the children of Israel were laden down with gold and silver and prosperity. In the time of struggle, there is always a wealth transfer that happens. Jesus, have mercy. And I'm telling you, God is getting ready to transfer wealth to the kingdom of God, to the people of God. Wall Street don't have it. None of those things out there. But when you put your hope in the Lord, so God is doing something. I wish I had three people just to jump up and shout, God is trying to tell me something. God is trying to tell me something. God is trying to tell me something. Oh. 
I'm going to minister to you. I'm going to minister to you, but just before I do, I want you to look down here. Look down here at all of these, including young men. Don't yawn anymore. Look at all of these people down here. He's yawning because you need to get online with him right there. All of these people that are in here this morning, and they're answering your, your, your emails. They're answering this morning. You're online, all right? And I want you to make, they'll pray for you online. You can get online right now. I'm going to flip the script. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? I don't know how they'll figure it out. I don't, I don't ever say I have the answers I just say I have the idea all right since two people did not pick up the phone and call and we made those up I'm gonna add an extra thousand dollars right now but it's only online don't call the number the 100th person to type in right now won't he do it 100 people and they're going to count them out the 100th person online right now to type in won't he do it you're going to get a thousand dollars right now i feel like i feel like blessing somebody right now you guys can grab your phone you can type it in right now you might be the 100th one all right, the praise team y'all i'm gonna give you permission to take get your phone if you want to do it type it in the 100th uh, Facebook and YouTube, they're going to count it out. The 100th person, you can type it in on Facebook or YouTube. They're counting it in real time, okay? The 100th person. All right, all the kids in your house, while that 100th person is typing it in to them, that 100th person, while they're, while they're typing that in, all the kids stand up before I minister to you. And there's a little song I used to sing, Mother... Mother was supposed to stay home this morning. We were counting in 30 seconds to go, and Mother, Pastor Frank, Mother came. You saw, I thought I had Mother convinced to stay home this morning and social distance. We were 30 seconds from live, and Mother came walking down the aisle, came in over here this morning. Mother, you, when I was a kid, Linda, when we were kids, we used to sing a song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. So I'm giving that 100th person quickly time to type, won't he do it, all right? And all the kids, stand up, stand up, stand up, kids. Stand up in the living room. Stand up right now, okay? He's got the whole world. Come on, praise team. In his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world. He's got the whole world. If I had any staff member that is awake that could tell me, did the person call from Pastor Frank? All right, so we're giving it to the person online right now. In his hands, he's got the whole world. How about he's got the little bitty babies? He's got the little bitty babies. In his hand, he's got the little bitty babies. In his hand, he's got the little bitty babies. Babies in his hand, he's got the whole world. Let's say he's got the mothers and the fathers, he's got the mothers and the fathers in his hand. He's got come on, kids. I want to hear all you kids at home. In his hands, he's got the mothers and the fathers. In his hand, he's got now point to everybody in your house and tell him he's got you and me, he's got you and me, brother. In his He's got sister, sister in his hands. He's got you, brother, in his hands. He's got the whole world. All right, take it up one key and say, he's got the whole. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. One more, take it up one more. He's got the whole, he's, he's got, got the whole world in his hands. Well, move, son, move. If we got the winner, move. In his hands, he's got the whole world. I'm waiting to preach. You got to move. Pick it up. He's got the whole world in his hands. All right, you know, we're learning, we're learning how to have church online. Okay, so... Folks be sauntering around not paying attention. I'm sorry to correct them online, but we're, they're, they're going to know it after this week. Wait a minute. Is that correct? Sam, run, run up here with that board. Run up here. You guys are going to love this. The 100th person on Facebook and YouTube, the 100th person that typed in, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Mother Jesse Harris, you just got, wow. He's got the whole world in He's got the whole world in his hands. 
He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Now, because I'm having to figure this out while we're live, so does that mean that was the third one? So we, I added one. So we still have two to go. So we need to be up here. And let's do that one right now. Okay, Pastor Frank, going to do that one right now. All right? Some of you are going to get a call to come in and help me this week. I'll tell you. One right. more. So Sister Honorable did not call in. We are picking one more in replacement of that. And the winner is... Cheryl Wheeler. Cheryl Wheeler, you have won $1,000. Please call the number right now. You have two minutes to call in. He's got the whole world in his hand. 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 And Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you. Thank you for all of our team that is working hard on the phones right now and online, the computer, our cyber pastors, the musicians, the singers that are here, these pastors that have come to just help me with our online service today. And folks are working hard. Help us, Father. Help us, Father, how to figure out how to get in that stream of your presence and your glory. Lord, that in this season, oh God, you have a word of impartation you're giving to people. You're talking to people, not just in Chicago, but all over the world. And I I pray now, Father, that you would help us to hear your voice. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord. Father, our ear is tuned to heaven, and all we care about is what you're saying, God. Speak to us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And while Sister Cheryl Wheeler is calling, which will be the fourth one that will call, and then I think we only have one more after that, right? So I'm not going to draw that last one till I finish preaching, okay? Is she on the phone? Okay, I didn't know we had a thumbs up. So we have somebody. She, Mother Jessie. Okay, bring it here really quickly. Bring it here. Mother Jessie is on the phone. Is it on speaker? Mother Jessie, are you there? Yes, I am. Where's, the, where's the speaker? Somebody. No, no, where's the actual speaker? Mother Jessie, are you there? How excited are you? I am, I, I am I'm all excited. I can't believe it. But I prayed. I prayed today. Oh, my God. We just don't know. God has us God. Do you hear me? <laughs> okay, Mother. Uh, mother shouting. Mother went in over there. Mother went in over there. So I think I have one more. And I'm going to do it. After I minister this, we're waiting on Cheryl, and we have, if Cheryl calls, then I only have one more. Her time of two minutes, is it up yet, Pastor Adam? Okay, all right. I want to just give you a word from the Lord this morning, for sure, for sure a word from the Lord, a sure word from the Lord. That's why this morning I'm very calm, other than with, you know, helping staff to get it together here, but I'm very calm with what I'm about to tell you this morning that God gave me this week very, very critical. God has you tuned here for such a time as this right now. God has you tuned here. Lighthouse is standing with you. Your shepherd is standing with you. All of our team. And we are doing the best. I, oh my goodness, under these circumstances that you didn't see coming, we didn't see coming. But God always knew. And there's a word from the Lord here today. You know, in the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, in the 19th verse... Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's the KJV, King James Version. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But in the NIV, Pastor Garland, do you know what the NIV says about that same scripture? In KJV, Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. But in the NIV, it says these words. Jesus said, follow me and I will send you out to fish. Follow me and I will send you out to fish. The sanctuary is not empty this morning. The saints are just deployed. Ah, God, I'm already preaching something right here. This is the most unusual circumstances in 42 years of being a pastor.
But I've been telling everybody the first few days I kept saying, God, I need to wrap my mind around this. I need to wrap my arms around it. And finally the Holy Ghost said to me, you don't need to wrap your mind around it. You don't need to wrap your arms around it. Wrap your Holy Ghost around it. And I'm telling you here this morning, God is on your side. God is fighting battles for you. And when you come out of this storm, you will come out of the storm different than you went in the storm. Because when you come out of the storm, God is going to be an ever-present help in the time of your trouble. People are... People that haven't prayed in years are praying now. People are calling on God that haven't called on God. God is shaking, not Chicago, not Illinois. God is shaking the whole world. And I'm telling you, God's got the attention of everybody. Hear me. And I hear, I hear those that would, would say on television and even some pastors and, 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 and they flipped it different kind of ways and even made it some negative sounding ways. But I stand to give you a clear sound right now. I stand before you to give you a clear sound. I know the word of God says what the enemy meant for harm, God always turns it around for his good. So don't be moved. Don't be disturbed. Don't be shaken. God is on your side and if you're a lighthousey and then you know I'm not preaching yet I'm going to take my 11 minutes here and I'm going to preach in just a second here but this is the Holy Spirit's been talking to me about it this week there was a term I'm going to read you a scripture from Luke chapter 15 in a moment get your Bible get your Bible but there is a term going along with this Pastor Frank it's a diabolical disease it's a diabolical thing that's happening my medical background, I've been studying how when it moves into lungs and you know what, what it's a diabolical, demonic thing that is happening, but God's going to get the glory. I don't want to discuss COVID-19 with you. All you do is turn on social media and you can hear it everywhere. It's blasting everywhere. I'm going to tell you the answer this morning. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. But I've heard a word. I've heard a word I want to talk about. I want to preach about it for 11 minutes. I've heard a term, Pastor Basserell, and if you paid attention to this situation, there is a medical term that they have used, and it goes over a lot of people's head. They say the reason why they can't get this thing under control in the whole world is because carriers or people that have this virus are, watch, oh, I feel like preaching, Mama Lorraine. I feel like preaching right here. I feel like preaching right here, right now. People carrying the virus, Shimeka are asymptomatic. Most people don't stop to say, well, what does that mean? That, that's a, some fancy pharmacology uh, name. That's some pharmaceutical company. That's some uh, medical dictionary. Asymptomatic. I'm going oh, to preach on this right here. Because God is cleaning up the church is what's happening. Asymptomatic means showing no sign. Carriers, but showing no sign. Do you know what God is? Every pastor is not going to make it through this storm. I'm telling you, some church is going to lose some pastors. Some church is going to, uh, you know why? Because they didn't look like they were carrying things in their life that they should not have been carrying. And now God is purging out some things. God is purging out some sexual junk. God is purging out some gossip. God is purging out some things. But they had one foot in and one foot out. They were asymptomatic. They looked all right, but they weren't all right. On Sunday, they were praising God, but Monday, they were going a different direction. I'm gonna preach to you for a couple minutes. Lord, have mercy, great day in the morning. I'm gonna preach to you from Luke, the 15th chapter, about an old boy. Well, actually, he was a young boy, but I'm gonna preach about the prodigal son. Right now, I got 11 minutes. I'm gonna preach this thing right here. In Luke, the 15th chapter, the Bible, 
Bible says, I wish I had a praying church right now that somebody would say, the Bible says, I feel like I'm in a storefront at 47 the wall bands here and I'm gonna preach this thing because some of us have been asymptomatic. We came to church, but we didn't know we were the church. We talked about the Lord, but we didn't know the Lord. When you come out of this thing, God is gonna take your ministry higher. God is gonna take your anointing higher. Ay, 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 ay. I tell you to point at somebody and tell them, I don't want to be asymptomatic. I don't want to be asymptomatic. Mother, that's having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. They talk about healing, but they never been healed. When God gets through with you, nobody will ever talk you out of the fact he's Jehovah Rapha. Some of you have been talking about the Lord will provide, but you've never sown a seed. Now God's got you sowing seed, but when you come out, you will not just have a talk, you will have a walk, and nobody, nobody will turn you around. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Luke chapter 15. My 11 men's going to start right now. Luke 15 and 11. I'm going to say it to you, Felicia. I'm going to say it to you, Jerome. I'm going to say it to you, Mary Ann. I'm going to say it to you, Selena. God is finished with the church being asymptomatic. We look like we got something, but we're carrying some ugly in. Smile at somebody's face, but you got hatred in your heart. And the Bible said he had a, come here, honey. You're going to be my Bible holder. Hold my Bible where I can read it. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, I'm not social distancing from my wife. Trust and believe. Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son, I feel, I may run up in here. I may run up in this place. Y'all ain't here to block me. I may run. Not many days after the younger son, somebody holler, the younger son, gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. <laughs> and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, you know what God is doing? He's letting the church come to ourself right now. Some of the stuff we thought we needed, we found out we can have church with or without it. Some of the things you thought you had to have to live holy, you ain't got it now. It's just you and God. We come to ourselves. I wish somebody would throw their hand up and say, I come to myself right now. I come to myself. He said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare? and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I'm no more, no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of those hired servants and Pastor Fransik, this last and final verse. And he arose. Some of you are thinking about, I need to make some changes. Maybe God is trying to tell me something. Thinking about it ain't gonna do nothing. That's asymptomatic. Until you rise, he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. Should have kicked his tail. I'm sorry, that's not in the word, is it? But his father, his father should have kicked his. Hmm. Edit that out of this show right here. 
But instead the father had compassion and ran, fell on his neck and kissed him. Sit down, sit down, sit down. If you're still standing in your, in your living room, which is a sanctuary, sit down. There are those that are asymptomatic in the church of the living God. God is calling out now those in the body of Christ. I want you to hear me today because I have only good news. But I want to talk to the church of the living God just for a second. It is God's will that none should perish but that all should come to repentance. God is not wanting one person to perish during this season. People ask me, Pastor Dan, is this of God or is it of the devil? I want you to know something right here. If it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's the devil. It's real simple. The thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But our God came that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. Abundantly. This is a season where you got to be careful what you let speak into your atmosphere. Turn off the television. Don't let your kids see all the drama and trauma that's all going on. Make sure you stay. Stay focused during this period of time. God is talking to you. So the prodigal reminds me. The prodigal reminds me of this word that I keep hearing about in the news every day. That because people are asymptomatic... We're going to lock down the whole world. In fact, last night the world went crazy because it seemed like New York was going to go on a total quarantine. Did you see that last night? They were going to completely quarantine. In other words, block the roads and everything in New York. And the whole world said, no, that would be like the federal government arresting everybody and like martial law. So it's not going to happen at least at this point. But in this situation, we're seeing and hearing so much and why they can't continue it. Why? Why can't we get a grip on it? Why with all of our money, America is the richest country in the world. Why with all of our money? Why with all of our technology? Why with all of our war equipment? Why in the world can't we get a grip on this? Because God created you when you were in your mother's belly and he will do whatever it takes that the enemy tries to use as a weapon. God will ultimately be the one to get the glory when he takes the enemy's weapon and God rises up says the eyes of the world are now saying they're not saying where's the government but they're saying God we need you like never before Somebody called me yesterday and said, Pastor Dan, for the first time in my life, said, don't judge me. I listen to country music. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't even know country music was still allowed anymore. But I guess US 99, am I saying the right station? US 99 is, is, is country music. Don't nobody in here even know. Don't nobody in here know about no country music. But anyway, they said on US 99, they had a preacher on there today. And in between those country songs and they're all terrible everybody's dog dies and their wife leaves them for another man and the trailer burns down and they said in between all of those country songs they had a preacher a gospel preacher come on the radio because people are calling the radio station saying we're freaking out we don't know what to do and they said what, what shall we do they brought in a man of God who took the microphone and prayed on secular radio and the boy said to me who called me said when they finished they shouted in the name that's above every name in the name of Jesus I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help sit down because I know you're standing the whole world is saying our money can't save us our weapons can't save us our technology can't save us this is the time the world is lifting their eyes to say alright if there is a God and I want you to know there's no judgment if you've never really known there is a God God's got your attention right now I'm telling you come to him run to him with your hands up so this prodigal son I've only got five minutes left this, I'm going to preach on right here. This prodigal son, watch, was living in his daddy's house, Pastor Garland. He had everything he could have ever wanted. Most of us have, 
had God put food on our table, clothes on our back. Years ago, I outlawed some songs. I won't let them be sung in church anymore. Not this church anyway. Because they used to sing a song that said, ain't got no shoes on my feet. And everybody had, everybody had shoes on. But they were singing, ain't got no shoes. Then they said, ain't got no bread in my house to eat. And you could tell by looking at all of us, we had bread in our house to eat. I said, we're not going to sing untruths anymore. We've had shoes, we've had clothes, we've had everything, just like the prodigal. Here we are, standing in the Father's house. We have the band. Band, you guys are amazing every Sunday. But I'm going to tell you what, you better get ready to work. Because the first Sunday, Lighthouse is back in here. They're going to hug you. We will, I, I, hopefully it'll be gloves off Sunday. Maybe we'll just call it gloves off. They're going to work you guys like you've never been worked. Why? Because when we were standing here and we had it all, we didn't appreciate it. Choir. Every Sunday we got the choir up here and Pastor Frank, they're leading us in worship. You better get ready, choir. The next time you come back on this stage, we're gonna just maul you in the Holy Ghost. You won't even have to say anything but hallelujah. Why? Because we stood in the Father's house and we had it all. I wish you'd just holler at somebody in your house shop. I've had it all, I've had it all. I've had food on my table, shoes on my feet. But just like the prodigal, now watch, pay attention. Just like the prodigal, most of us have had one foot in and one foot out. We were here when it was convenient, but we were over here when we wanted to get our shake on. We were milkshaking on Friday night and we were hot tamale on Saturday night. And on Sunday, we were back in the house of God. We were in the Father's house. And God said to me, I want you when you stand there this weekend, damn cry loud and spare not. And tell my people, I know I heard from God, tell my people everything is going to be all right. There is a suddenly coming. But I got news for you. There's no suddenly. There's no suddenly. There's no suddenly until you get one foot out of the world and you stand flat footed for the Lord. On Christ the solid rock you stand and recognize all of the ground is sinking sand. Sit down. I got three minutes. Sit down, sit down, sit down. You don't miss the water till the well runs dry. We fielded hundreds of calls People, Pastor Dan, can I just come and sit in the back of the church Sunday while you're preaching? You, they weren't even here on time when they could get to church. Oh, I'm preaching right now. They didn't show up, but every third Sunday anyway. But now, God's got your attention. Asymptomatic, the prodigal was Pastor Garland. Nobody knew because he looked like the father's son. He was in the father's house. He had his ring on. He had his robe on. He was in a position of envy. But I've watched many people who didn't recognize what they had. And because they were asymptomatic, they showed no signs that they had one eye on the world. Hear me, husband, I'm talking to you. You may get what you want and lose what you have. You may get what that other foot has got your eye open. But do you know why so many people are turning to the Lord right now? Because well, just like the prodigal, once he finally left, come on son, just softly. Pastor Francis, the Bible says, he fain would have filled his belly with the husks of the swine. That sounds fancy, but I'm gonna break it down. He was so desperate. He would have eaten husks of corn that the pigs had urinated on. Pigs are known to urinate on their own food. 
And he eyeballed urine-stained corn husk. See, sin is only for a season. Sin is temporary. And when it's all finished, he's laying in the pit. God is not going to let the church come back into session until you recognize. God, I'm under an anointing right here. I'm talking to some of you young men. I'm talking to some of you young ladies. God's got your attention now. And fain he would have filled his belly. I looked so appealing. Oh, oh, church. God, the word of God, Pastor Dan. But now, everything that glitters is not gold. Now, it's not until you have lost all of that. I'm through. Do you know that this week, so many prodigals have emailed us and called us. I got an email this week from somebody I have not heard from in 10 years. 10 years. And this lady said to me, Pastor Dan, I miss church so bad. And I wanted to say, you ain't been here in 10 years anyway. But I knew what she was saying. I never realized what I had. I'm talking to you, Lighthouse, from a burdened heart today. God's got our attention. And though we've been asymptomatic, God is bringing you back to stand on the solid rock. I don't know how to be anything but transparent to you, so I'm going to be transparent. Pastor Tony, Mr. Jonathan, could you guys hand me this cross up here real quick? Let me just put it right here. Just right there, thank you. I had a moment this week when Mama Lorraine, Sister Christy, Jaden, Sister Shawnee, I had a moment this week when nobody was in this sanctuary but me. And the, my heart hurt because I looked at empty seats and I'm not used to that. I'm used to Pastor Rhonda and all those ushers trying to figure out where to seat people. And I looked at the empty seats. <laughs> Tears started streaming down my face. And I said, God, your house was never made to be empty. God, I'm a gospel preacher. I want every seat to be filled. And, oh, God. God, this is hurting me. And God spoke to me in that moment, and I'm closing with this. God said to me, now you understand how I feel. As clear as a bell, Mama Lorraine, that's what God said. Now you understand. I spread the table. I spread the table. I make a feast but it's just not that important because someone is asymptomatic. They look holy. They look like they love God, but they're leaning in the wrong direction. God said to me every Sunday morning, that's how I feel. The table is spread. That's why in the Bible when he made a feast, he said, if they didn't show up, go to the highways and the byways. Get the lame and the halt. Get those that, though they RSVP'd, they never showed. So go get the people who were saying, I'll go. I'll go. I'm hungry. I'll go. I'm telling you, Lighthouse, so many names are on this and right now. Right now, I want every person, every person, oh God, I'm under an anointing. I want every person watching right now to go online. People that are down here on our streaming team, get ready. I want you to go online or I want you to pick up your phone right now and I want you to say these words. I'm in the house today. I'm in the house today.
God has spread the table and the feast of the Lord is going on. I want the, the streaming team, come on praise team, come, come and get in place. The streaming team will respond to every single one of you right now. But I want right now, I want several, several hundred of you just type it in. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Pick up the phone and call them right now. Say, I'm in the house. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Jesus is saying, my people, my people, I'm pulling them out of sin. I'm pulling them out of one foot in the church and one foot in the world. And God is calling you back to his house. God is calling your heart back to the Father. Oh, the glory. Sing it, praise team of your presence. <laughs> we, your temple, give you reverence. So rise from your rest. And be blessed by our praise. Wait a minute, right now, right now. Are you typing it in? I'm telling you, this is the altar call. I'm calling everybody to the altar right now. And the only way I'm gonna know is if you type in, I'm in the house, I'm in the house. Quickly type it in on Facebook or YouTube. They're gonna respond to you. They're gonna respond to you, okay? All right, Shawnee, are they typing it in right now? I'm in the house, yes. They're all the streaming team, they're typing back to you. I'm in the house. People are on the phones waiting for your call. You can sow a seed right now. We are blessed to be a blessing and as long as people bless this house, I'm gonna keep blessing the community. I'm gonna keep blessing people. I'm getting ready to draw one more name Right, Samantha? Uh, two more names. I'm getting ready to bless two more people with $1,000. But I'm not doing it until you quickly type in, I'm in the house. Type it in your live stream right now. Type it in YouTube. Type it in Facebook. Type it on Periscope. Type it wherever you're watching. Pick up the phone and call. They're going to sing it one more time. This is the altar call. Come home, prodigal. Come home, prodigal. Come home. Just another moment, pick up the phones and call. I wish some of my staff was letting me know are the phones ringing right now. Okay, thank you. Please don't be afraid to communicate to me, people of God. Staff is doing a wonderful job. And down here in the front, Mama Lorraine, are people online with us right now. They're typing in, I'm in the house. This is the altar call. This is the altar call. Type it in right now, I'm in the house. But I'm under a special anointing right now. I want the three senior assistant pastors to come. You don't have to be close, but I want you to stand here. Stand here. I'm going to lead somebody. I know we're a few minutes over time right now, but the Holy Ghost has been here today. There's prodigals coming home. I need people at the altar with me, and the only way I'm going to know you're at the altar is if you pick up the phone right now and you, you say, I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Sow a seed while you get on that phone. They can help you with that. Our streaming team can help you sow your tithe and your offering. If, if, if we don't do it, and Lighthouse is doing it, Pastor Frank, if we don't do it, there'll be no house to come back to. If we don't do it, there'll be no house to come back to. 
So thank you. We are so great. We have 52 employees here. Not one of them have missed a check. Not nobody. Every bill we have, in fact, because every bill was paid, that's why I'm giving away money. I'm giving it away. We're getting ready to bless two more people. But this is a moment. We're at the altar now. We're at the altar. And I want you to stretch your hand to the camera with me, senior assistant pastors. Maybe you're watching and you're, you're from another country or another state. We're so happy you're here with us today. Maybe you knew the Lord long ago, but you've been away from the Lord. For some reason, Pastor Frank, the Lord has me specifically preaching to prodigals. Prodigals. Pastor Garland, come over here. Stand up here with us. Prodigals. And you've been embarrassed because you made mistakes. Don't be embarrassed. All of us have, we've all made mistakes. We learn from that. That's how we learn how to do right. So stretch your hand to me. Stretch it to the television. Stretch it to your computer, your phone, wherever you're watching. We're at the altar now. Mr. Jonathan, are they typing it in? I'm in the house. Sister Christy, they're typing it in. Our team will answer every one of you. Keep typing it in. The only way I know you're at the altar is if you type in, I'm in the house. I'm in the house. Pray with me out loud. Dear Jesus, I really need you. No fancy words. Just a humble heart. Please come into my life. Wash all of my sins away. And forgive me right now. Save me, Jesus. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And I'll be your child. Both feet in this time. Both feet in this time, God. Not looking to the right or left. But you have my attention now, Lord. Go ahead, raise that hand up to him. Tell him, look up to him now. Tell him, you have my attention, God. Oh, God. Lord, if me giving thousand dollars away to people will cause them to watch church today, I'll keep, I'm going to tell you right now, I hadn't planned on this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Pastor Adam, I'm not even going to look at him because he's going to be upset with me. I'm going to double this next week. I'm going to double this next week. I've been blessed and I want to bless you. I'm going to double it. You stay tuned. Stay with our Facebook. We'll keep watching on Facebook. If today your name didn't get called, it may be because next week God's got a double portion waiting. Ah, a shut table cup. But I'm telling you, you will come out of this storm all right. Your ship will be okay. We declare it now. Both feet are in, no asymptomatic. No asymptomatic. Vengeance, bitterness, anger, jealousy, all of it. Pastor Garland, God said to me, get ready. The, the face of the congregation could change a little bit. There's some pastors that may not weather the storm. There's some folks, but it's gonna, it's, it will always be okay because God gets the glory. If you got one foot out and one foot in, I'm talking to you. Don't get left behind because what's going to happen with God's kingdom, it's, it's about to explode on the face of the earth. I'm telling you, revival is coming like it, it's going to, in 42 years, I've never seen what I'm about to see with this revival. Now with that hand raised to heaven, say you have my attention, Jesus. Once and for all, I'm with you forever and you're with me forever. Well, clap those hands and give God a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise team, sing it one more time while people type it in. We're still at the altar. I'm in the house. Type it in or pick up the phone. Sow a seed. Call us. Get online and sow a seed right now. Oh, the glory of your presence. God, we thank you for your presence uh, that you have brought down in this place today. The glory of God. We are a privileged people. Uh, may we never take it for granted. May we not be a symptomatic, uh, but Father, help us to be in the house. Uh, oh my God, uh, help us to get both feet 
our body, our hands, our mind, our heart, all in the house. There's a work to do for you. You have something for everybody to do. Help us to pick up the load that you have provided, the calling that you have called us to. I know you have something for every one of us. May we not just sit by and let this world slip off into eternity, but help us to be about our Father's business. Anoint us, use us, help us to take advantage of the anointing that you are putting on our lives. I thank you for the mighty power of God, for the revival that is to come. There has to be pain before revival. We know that. Father, we're going through that. But I know that a revival waits on the other side. Hallelujah. Thank you for your spirit this very day. Bless your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, those that don't know you, Father, stir their hearts like never before. Like never before. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mother, God spoke to me yesterday. Quickly, quickly, pick up the phone. You've got to call right now. You'll never be asymptomatic after this. No longer. I'm not, I, God shifted me to a different place. I'm not going to deal with... I'm not going to have to deal with some of the stuff with folks. God's getting both feet in. He's getting both feet in for them. God took me to Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. There will be sufferings and persecution. But then the Bible said there will be glory after this. I was running down Cicero Avenue yesterday hollering. There will be glory after this, after every storm the sun shines, after every cloud the storm goes away, after every trial there will be glory after this. I wish I had three people just to jump up and shout there will be glory, there will be glory, there will be glory after this. Oh. We gotta go. I'm so far over time, but Pastor Garland, tomorrow night at 6.30, me and you are doing a lot. We're doing, every night at 6.30, we're doing stuff. We done had Mother doing hymnoscope one night this week, old songs. We've had comedy. We've had a little everything. Tomorrow night, Pastor Garland and I are doing a conquering wealth during this struggle because there's a wealth transfer going on. And I read something. I read something. I want to talk about this. I read something yesterday that said there are people that were broke that will emerge as millionaires when this is over because of the way the system. Oh, God have mercy. I ain't got time to talk about this, but I'm telling you, when you come out on the other side, there will be glory. After three people jump up, jump, there will be glory after this. There will be glory after this. There will be glory. I gotta go over there. I, I, Fred, Pastor Fred, y'all get something up tempo. I'm gonna shout it off after I get these two names drawn. But I'm gonna tell you, Pastor Basil, Pastor Fronsick, Mother, Linda, Pastor Frank, uh, Pastor Garland, I'm gonna tell everybody here this week when they tell you how bad it is and the death report keeps going up and the virus keeps coming up, I want you to do what I'm doing right now. Pete, I want you to make a meme out of this. I want you just to stretch your hand to him and shout, there will be glory after this. There will be glory after this. When they tell you, well, guess how many died? There will be glory after this. When they say, guess how many more got the virus? There will be glory after this. I tell you right now, the holler, there will be glory. Woo! I got a feeling everything's gonna be all right. Oh,
today. Let us draw two more names. First lady, will you help Pastor Adam? All right, so two people are going to win $1,000. And as Pastor said, check back next week as that amount might double. So right now, the... Oh, goodness. <laughs> Say it together. <laughs> Pastor Molly Lang. Pastor Molly, Say, Pastor you have two minutes to call in right now. Is the number on the screen? Yes. Okay, Pastor Molly, you got, I know, I know we're gonna draw the same word. I'll make sure that number's on the screen, Pastor Molly. I don't want you to miss this. You got two minutes. All right, here we go. Here's the second oh one. Oh my goodness, this is Debbie Jennings. Debbie Jennings. Debbie Jennings. Oh, Pastor you Molly. Just got a oh, oh, Pastor Molly. Oh, oh. They got two minutes. They got two minutes to go. Wait, they have Sam's two minutes do to go. Before we leave, <laughs> before we leave, Pastor Molly and Sister. Debbie, you have two minutes to call in. Use the number right now. Before we leave, before we shout it out, I just have a, a few more announcements. Join us this Wednesday at 6.30. Last week, Pastor Dan, we um, blessed small business, the small business of five guys. But this week, he has another cyber revival with Elder Matt, so you don't want to miss out. Again, we are blessing small businesses. Join us at 6.30. 6.30 Central Standard Time this Wednesday. Sam, that mother took my mind. Mother is determined she's going to sing something I today. I am going to sing. So wait, you can't turn her mic off till I tell her she's ready. Small business is Wednesday night. You know, I'm in a flow of, turn this mic up, son. I'm in a flow of giving money away and blessing people. I'm telling you, the way you get blessed, Sam, the way you get blessed. Come here, Pastor Adam. Come here, Linda. Not too close, social distancing. But the way you get blessed, Pastor Garland, I'm telling you, people are going to come out of this with more wealth than they, they thought possible. You don't wait and sow when you have it. You sow in the time of famine. Read it for yourself in the Word of God. That's right. Speaking so of so... Bless some, I'm going to bless some small businesses. He's going to bless some small businesses this Wednesday. Be here at 6.30 Central Standard Time. Speaking of sowing, our 24-hour giving and online text, it's still open. If you have not given, if you've not sown seed into your house, your Lighthouse Church, please do so right now. The information is showing right up on your screen. Also, something new and something exciting we're doing this week is drive-through prayer. If you want prayer, again, we're not going to get out of our cars. Um, there will be a pastor here on campus from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday this week. If you want prayer, drive through our campus just to get prayer. Also, if you have an uh, offering and tithe that you want to drop off, that is the window for you to do that. Again, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday for drive through prayer. We will be integral. We will have gloves. We will have masks. But again, we just want you to feel like this is your home. We are still with you. Amen. Also, next Sunday is Palm Sunday weekend. Of course, we will not be giving out palms. And that's also our friends and family weekend. But Lighthouse, this is an opportunity for you to invite your friends and family to our cyber church, our cyber community. Invite those who wouldn't normally come to church. Forward them this link. Again, we'll see you back at the same time, same place, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time next Sunday. Thank you, Elder Sam, and you're so good at what you do. Pray for me with all the staff because I'm driving them crazy because I want everything to be right for you, okay? So we're working it all out. Guess what? I hope you didn't go off the air because, you know, Mother's determined. She said, I got up and came over here because the Lord gave me a song. We're way over time. But only one called in. Pastor Molly Led called and claimed her thousand. But the other person did not call. Oh, wait, sorry, they did call. I'm sorry. We, we don't understand. We can't see or hear what. We, they did call. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, but stay tuned because I'm going to give away more Wednesday night and next week. Okay, mother. This is not upbeat. This is a promise. This is for the people of my generation, all right? Try to hang with me, Brother David. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and dine. With his manna he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. Oh, you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. 
He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry call it now. Come and dine, oh, come and dine. The master called it, come and dine. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. To the hungry call it now. Come and die. Only Mother Willis can get away with that. Take me back to I got a feeling. Take me back. I'm going off the air with I got a feeling right now. All right, we love you. Watch live stream. Stay connected with us. We're going to bless you all this week. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Keep us on for one minute. Keep us on. I'm going to shout it out. Come on, shout with me. It's going. 